Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about all of my picks for the postseason awards, including the Heisman. I do have Quinn Ewers taking on the Heisman this upcoming year with a remarkable year in that uh, Steve Sarkeesian offense, but let's jump into some fall camp intel. There is a ton of things to break down all ar uh, around the country. This is absolutely something we'll likely do pretty much every day. We'll likely bounce around a little bit, but this will obviously be a big time topic of conversation over the next couple of weeks as we head into the 2024 season. But let's go ahead and jump in on, on in here and let's start over at Texas and let's talk about some of the different things going on the defensive side of the ball, particularly that defensive line. There are a ton of questions going into the season. How are you going to replace Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy as you head into the season? Well, I think Vernon Broughton is answering that question a lot This uh, in the fall camp thus far. He is someone that has really been very impressive, kind of that leader of that defensive tackle group as of right now. I think uh, that guy right next to him, Alfred Collins, will absolutely be a really good player as well. But it's good that Texas has that one guy. You know, you can look forward and say, Vernon Broughton is going to be that big-time space heater, kind of that Tavondre Sweat type player for this team, and they very much need it. And then... On the outside, you have Baron Sorrell is absolutely becoming kind of the leader out there, an absolute physical beast, someone that they have so many different edge rushers over at Texas, but he's a very, very good against the run, very, very strong at the point of attack, and absolutely someone that Texas is going to need to play big time role uh, this upcoming year. Then let's get into Jalen Gilbo. This is the guy that has really been coming along, and he was someone that they really loved last year. He played a number of snaps last year, but got injured, struggled with some stuff, and didn't necessarily come back the same player, but he might just be the starter at the nickel uh, position, and Jade Barron might move on over to the boundary corner because... This guy is special. Apparently, he's one of those guys that they put a um, one of the helmet communications in his helmet, so someone they have a ton of confidence in. There's no two ways about that. I think he's going to be the starter at the end of the day, and that back end of Texas looks stronger and stronger by every single second. Um, but let's get into this offense, and frankly, the more that you hear about this offense, the more you think they have just ridiculous amounts of weapons. The two new guys to add to that list are Trey Wisner, the guy on your screen, a sophomore running back that is just remarkably fast. And then Juan Davis, a very smooth junior tight end that absolutely has been kind of working on his craft throughout his first couple of years and is finally ready to kind of burst onto the scene over there in Austin. Now, at this point, they have about seven or eight wide receivers they can throw to, three tight ends, three running backs. Sark's got to feel really, really good about that. Um, I think it's going to be a very, very fun year in uh, Austin, and it sounds like Quinn Ewers and really all of the quarterbacks, including Arch Manning and Trey Owens, look really, really sharp throughout camp. So, Everything's looking right for Texas right about now, but let's move on to Notre Dame. Let's talk about the tackle positions because that is the big time thing for this team. They're losing Joe Alt, they're losing Blake Frazier at both of the tackle positions, and they're going to have some big guys that are going to have to step up. Charles, uh, I don't want to get this wrong, Jagusa, Jagusa. Yeah, Charles Jagusa is a very, very talented freshman that played in the bowl game last year after Joe Alt moved on to the NFL draft. This is a very talented kid, but he is a, he is going into his sophomore year. A big ask for him to take over at the left tackle position for a national title contender. So that's going to be definitely something to watch. It sounds like Tosh Baker and Emil Wagner are battling over that right side. And then uh, Gerby Lambert is absolutely someone that could make some run into that uh, role at some point throughout the season. All very very talented guys but again fairly young so that's going to be something to really watch here and then on the outside uh, Benjamin Morrison is a very talented cornerback for them likely their best coverage guy on the team Xavier Watts on the back end is a fantastic player but obviously being a safety not quite as good in coverage Benjamin Morrison held uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. to only 32 yards last season well, it sounds like he's out right now with an injury. He's been out for quite some time, but he still hasn't worked his way back. And they sound, it sounds like it's going to be relatively close to that A&M game when he finally does come back. And that adds a little bit of a question into that game where you might just need him to play a big-time game against some of those big-time wide receivers at A&M. So it'll be really interesting to watch that develop. If he gets available pretty soon, I feel pretty confident in this team. If he doesn't, then... It could be a dangerous start to the season. Um, it sounds like Riley Leonard looks pretty strong uh, early on in fall camp and absolutely will be ready to go uh, week one. He had some injury troubles throughout spring, but it sounds like he'll be ready to roll uh, when week one rolls around. But Alabama is another team that we're watching very closely, a massive camp for this team. So many different things going all over the place with a ton of different cha uh, changes, but 
it sounds like that running back room makes them feel really, really good. They have a little bit of continuity there with Robert Gillespie sticking around. You have Justice Haynes, Jamarian Miller back in. Both those guys, I think, are going to be really remarkable this year. Justice Haynes is someone that I think is going to develop into one of those classic Alabama running backs that we all know, and I think they're going to make so much noise this upcoming year. Now, they only rush for about a yeah, excuse me. They only rush for about uh, four, uh, 400 combined yards a year ago, so not necessarily the most productive group coming back for them, but absolutely a duo that can make some noise there. And then you have a group that I'm really fascinated to watch. Obviously, you talk about Jalen Milrow. I've talked about this a number of times. I think he's the most impactful player in the entire conference when you look at the SEC and could be a guy that definitely makes some noise this upcoming year. And then a little side note, Kane Womack wearing an entire full sweatsuit to uh, practice is an in uh, total defensive coordinator move, and I absolutely love that. He's sweating through everything, but that's obviously going to be an interesting thing to watch. That camp is probably one of the most impactful across the country, and then you go over to Florida State, and it sounds like DJU looks really confident in this offense. There have been some kind of uh, wavering reports throughout the days, which is frankly what I was worried about, which is you know the inconsistency that he's played with over the last couple of years. I think there's that top-end ability that is really, really talented. You know, there There is that ability that he can open up an offense and do some really remarkable things. He showed it a couple of times throughout his career, but I think when you look at, you know, the big-time thing for him, it's doing that consistently, doing that on a week-to-week basis, and from what we heard from fall camp, it's not necessarily a finished product at this point. He started really hot. It sounded like yesterday was a very rough day for him and overall the offense in general, so it's definitely one of those things that we'll be watching throughout fall camp. The other thing that is really interesting with this team is Malik Benson is making some run really, really quickly. He's becoming the top wide receiver on this roster, and they kind of need him to be. I think Hakeem Williams is absolutely going to be a really good player for them, but I think this dude is absolutely is going to be their go-to guy, and frankly, he kind of needs to be for DJ to be successful this upcoming year. That's why they brought him in from Alabama. Um, and then you look at the O-line and running backs. They look really solid this upcoming year, so if DJ isn't quite as solid as you want him to be, you can lean on Roy Dell Williams, you can lean on Keziah Holmes, and you can make some of those uh, plays on the ground that you might not be able to make through the air. And then the defense looks about as dominant as you would expect if you're a Florida State fan. Peyton Patrick, or Patrick Payton, excuse me, Patrick Payton is showing off his elite ability throughout camp, and no one needed him to show that, but he's going to show it all the same. He's a very talented player and absolutely someone that will have plenty to say about this upcoming season for Florida State. And then Ohio State is a very interesting team. They only started camp yesterday, so not necessarily a ton to unpack here, but there's a little bit, that's for sure. The quarterback position is the one that everyone's watching. It sounds like Devin Brown started the uh, camp first with the first team offense out there at quarterback. They did split uh, some of those snaps throughout the day, but overall it sounded like it was De uh, Devin Brown taking the snaps with the ones, and he looked really solid throughout the 7-on-7 seven -seven periods apparently. Will Howard kind of had an up-and-down day, made some great throws, missed some big-time throws, but overall I think there's going to be a battle down to the first week, and I think Ryan Day is not necessarily loving that prospect, but I frankly think Will Howard is going to take over that job and make it no doubt going into the season, but there's still questions out there, so uh, maybe I'm getting a little bit nervous as well, but it does sound like this wide receiver room is what we expected, one of the elite in the country, but the two guys in that picture are not necessarily the guys that we've been talking about. We've been talking about Emeka Ibuka, Jeremiah Smith, but Carnell Tate ha apparently made the play of the day yesterday on a slightly highly thrown ball uh, from Will Howard, made a remarkable play on that, and then Brandon Innes has apparently made a ton of plays early on in camp, so they're doing exactly what you want them to do. So I definitely think this wide receiver group is about four or five, maybe even six deep that absolutely can make some big-time plays, and those two guys might just be the key to this offense, honestly. And then you look at the defensive side of the ball. They're totally dominant. Apparently, Jack Sawyer is having an incredible uh start to camp and frankly he's going to be incredible this entire year Sonny Styles is making this jump down to linebacker that will be a huge thing to watch throughout the camp and then that guy in the picture Caleb Downs he is returning punts this will obviously be uh, something very interesting to watch a very very athletically just freak there's no two ways about that but I do think it's some one of those things that if he does well returning punts I would not be surprised seeing him at running back at some point this upcoming year so it's going to be really fun to watch fall camp unfold it's always that time of year when these teams really take shape you know you get to see you get to hear all of the hype going into the season but 
now you get to really put pads on and figure out, you know, who's about it, who's not. And it's going to be really fun to watch all of those unfold throughout the next three weeks, four weeks into the season. And it's going to be remarkable how much this has, uh, or how much this uh, next couple of weeks has to do with what they can do this upcoming season. But let's take our last break here. When we come back, we're going to do a little bit of a Friday wrap up, do some headline catch up with all of the different things that have happened around the sport. So we'll break that down right after this. So stick with us. 